Welcome back to another episode of the Duke It Out podcast. This podcast is brought to you by Nevin Eyewear, the best glasses in the game right now. Folks, today we have a special guest by the name of Roger Matthews. I don't know if anybody's familiar with the Jersey Shore. Maybe you've seen the show, maybe you've seen the craziness that goes on in the show, but this motherfucker was on the show and he's sitting in the hot seat tonight. We're gonna talk some shit and uh, let's get into it. And then I went to California. That aired, by the way. You put it back up, right? Yeah, I was like, fuck yeah. that. You know, you, you, you gave me the motivation. Bro, send it. I'm honestly, I'm mad at myself. I just got I, crushed because I, I asked a question that was asked on another podcast to Frank. I was like, would you rather have a trans son or a, a Bro, Down once you get into Bro, that, I got murdered. That's it. That's it. But uh, we good? <sighs> All right, fellas. We have a good one today. You're going to want to tune in, keep the ears perked up. We got a very special guest. You either might have seen this guy on your fucking TV screen or... Talking shit on the internet, on his podcasts, and all that shit. But Roger Matthews, the man, the myth, the legend. If you don't know him, now you know him. Um, what's up, brother? What's up, buddy boy? Thank happy, you for having me on, man. Happy 2024. Nice little setup you got here. I like Not this. Not bad, right? Yeah. It makes me feel a little One-stop cozy. One-stop shopping. You get your merch, get your I know, podcast. Bro. And I like wearing it, too. Yeah. Did you hey, see what I got on? Bro. Yo, we always shit. we're always keeping Roger clean with Fuck the new yeah, shit. Bro. Hell yeah. We gotta make sure I gotta I make sure every drop, dude. I, I you know what I haven't worn you know yet what? because my kids are usually with me, but I will. Is your pronouns suck? I'm, or, or fuck no, your, fuck you, fuck you pronouns. Yeah, yeah, yeah I yeah. know. I gotta. I'm trying to like steer away from like the because yeah. there's yeah, yeah. kids that get in trouble at school yeah. that wear my shit all yeah. the time. And I just swore on air. Like we learned the lesson. You know who uh, Frankie did Brendan Schaub's podcast, and he said for the first two minutes. Don't swear. And then after that, because it messes the algorithm up. So bleep, the, bleep out that, that F-bomb I just dropped. But oh, damn. I, I didn't say it messes the algorithm up where if you if you curse, they just totally like drop no your way. numbers. Yeah. I didn't even know about So that. try to go two minutes without swearing, especially the F-bomb one. I say yeah. that. That's my, I that's say my it. number that's my one go-to. Word. I say it for everything. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's so funny. Every time that you do a podcast and you're wearing the thing, I get my friends that send to me like, yo, is this your merch? Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, the guy. That's the guy. represent. But you know what I think is funny? Yeah. Does everybody think that you're like, because obviously you're not from Jersey. Yeah. So I know that like yeah. majority of the world that yeah. like knows of you is probably like, oh, he's a yeah. Jersey Shore growing up native guy. Yeah. But where are, you, where, where are you from? Well, I, listen, man, I worked really hard for a bunch of years to look like a Guido. Right? <laughs> like I worked, I worked hard at it, but I'm not a Guido at all. I mean, I'm a little bit Italian. I don't even know what percentage I am, but uh, like a little bit, not much on my dad's side, but he's mostly Dutch. Yeah. My mom's size is 100% German, but I grew up in Maine, a little tiny East Coast uh, lobster nice. fishing community yeah. near Bar Harbor. Everybody kind of knows where KD National Park and Bar Harbor is. I was pretty pretty close to that area. So, but a little tiny town called Cherryfield, Maine. So, population of like I think when I left in uh, I, I left there in '98. Uh, I think it had a population of like 900 people, and I think it was like nine oh nine. Wait, how old were you in '98? 902. I was uh, '98. Was yeah, what you what year were you born? 2000. <laughs> And yo, we got a grandfather in the was, house. Uh, yo, yo, I hate to be a dick, but you might be our <laughs> oldest guest. To, right now, yeah, literally all the guests combined in age, you definitely are right yeah, there. I don't know if your Gen Zers are going to dig me or not, but uh, yeah, so I moved here when I was 22 to Jersey. I was 22 years old. Holy shit. Girls, bro. Honestly, that's a simple answer. If that's your next question, girls. Do, okay, but there is it. I don't know if it's just me mm. or if it's what I've run into. The women here are f lunatics. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I like that. Yeah, I don't know why. It's like well, most of them are. Uh, we're in a very heavily uh, Italian area. Yes, most Italian. I know. Like you know what I call them? I call them yeah. hot pieces of shit. Crazy. Yeah, yeah. Hot That's pieces of shit. I say that to them, and, I, and I'll say that to them in person because it's like they don't know. They don't know how to take that. It's <laughs> yeah, like okay, yeah. you called me hot, yeah, but yeah. you also called me a piece of shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm like, yeah, you're in that ballpark because you kind tough of a one to interpret. You've said that to just random strangers. Bro, I've, I've, when I have a few in me, yeah, yeah, it's game Hot over. I start shit. talking. I don't know crazy. If to try that one. I don't know if that's going to go over well. But so, um, I used one, to have a shirt that I only wore out a few times, and it caught. When you remember Hot Topic, right? Everybody shopped at Hot Topic back back in the day. Never heard of that. You never heard of Hot Topic in what? the mall? I think it's still in the mall to this day. There's a Hot what Topic. What is it? Just has all. It's just like, like a Spencer's. It's a lot of clothing, a lot of merch, a lot of random sayings. I yeah, like go in there. I used to like go yeah, in yeah. on a Friday and buy like a twenty five dollar t shirt and think I was the coolest kid at the club. Now, mind you, this is before I became like a full blown Guido and like 
you know, jumped on the sauce and hit the gym. I was just this skinny kid from Maine trying to be yeah. cool in Jersey. But I remember I bought this shirt and said, actually, no, I think they didn't sell this. I bought this online, but I did buy Hot Topic shirts. But it said, I eat more pussy than cervical cancer. Wow. That's pretty bad, bro. That's pretty bad. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty bad. But like that, see, that's why I like making yeah. my kind of merch because yeah, yeah. it's like, it's so, it, it gets people to pull their phone out and mm -hmm. take a photo of it. Like I, my, my, a long time ago, I made a shirt that says, you can't eat ass without a mask. Yeah. That was when people yeah. were wearing masks and yeah, shit. Yeah, and yeah, I made yeah, a shirt yeah. like that. Obviously people were fucking flipping out about it. Yeah, but like, course. that's the way to go, bro. Yeah. I love that Send shit. Send it. Just go all in. That's how I gotta I watch what I do now because I got kids. But back then, I didn't give a shit. I'd do whatever. So I, it's I, funny too. You know what I mean? Obviously, every situation, right, is personal to somebody. Yeah. Somebody, I'm sure, had somebody in their family. But it's you're not trying to be personal about it. You know I what I mean? People and you got to remember that. Like we get, you know, we get eviscerated sometimes on our podcast for saying things. But you know, like like we're not personally going after anybody or personally like attacking anybody. It's what what do you want us to talk about? The weather? You got to be a little, you know, you got to be a little, especially in the name of. We joke around a lot on the show, a lot of humor, a lot of comedy. You know yeah. what I mean? And uh, you got to push envelopes a little bit, man. You know what I mean? Bro, but it's the comedy game is changing, dude. Yeah, you I mean, people are getting canceled left yeah. and right for the stupidest fucking shit. Ah, uh, you think so? I mean, I think some guys still push it. I mean, who's a uh, Chappelle? Right, he's always pushing the envelope. Yo, that they dude's... haven't canceled him yet. I, I think the people that don't get canceled are the people that look at it like I'm fucking uncancelable. Oh I yeah, don't give a shit. Kid Rock, you, perfect example. Kid Rock, it's like I'm uncancelled. Oh you yes, yes, yes. Cancel me. Yeah, and he hasn't been canceled. You gotta just eat it. Yeah, you gotta just exactly. like because because you're gonna have that barrier where you have the people gonna come after you to try mm -hmm. to bring, but you just gotta like, all right, yeah, I said what I said. You don't yeah. like it, like exactly. That's it. It's an opinion. You know what I mean? Crazy. Get over it. So I was looking at your Instagram page. I was stalking it, obviously, to f figure you out. I guess a little bit more because I don't fully know you just yet. Sure, I guess sure. after I this, be your grandfather, more. so I wouldn't expect you, you got. To. I like that you post your kids a lot on there. Yeah, man. I mean, it's um, uh, how old are they now? I, I, I mean, that's that's surrounded, I guess, in a little controversy, right? Posting a lot of your kids, a lot of people frown on that, a lot of people don't. But I look at it. This is how I've kind of always looked at it, right? Obviously, like a lot of my life, personal life, and relationships was documented on on a reality TV show. Yeah. Then we had a little spinoff show where we brought our daughter into the world, and that was documented. It was a much, you know, it wasn't as controversial. It was it was, uh, it was, was kind of family-orientated. So, so, so a lot of it was already put out there. In mm -hmm. hindsight, good idea, bad idea, I don't know, but I can't change it. Fuck it, I'm not trying to change it. Mm -hmm. you know, it happened, right? But with, um, you know, my, my social media platforms, especially Instagram, because I can't dedicate myself to five different ones, I pretty much just stick to the gram. Yeah. Um, I look at it like it's, you know, when I was a kid, my mom, this is way before your time, but my mom had... Photo albums, right? Oh, like, for like she, memories. Yeah, yeah. Memories. This is like this. When, I'm, exactly when dad's not here that, anymore, yeah. my kids, my, hopefully my Instagram will still be around. I mean, I got my password written <laughs> Yo, down. Hope you don't my turn daughter to me, knows. Bro, it gets removed. Then you're <laughs> yeah. fucked. Yeah, exactly. She knows my the password to my safe that's got my, my Instagram <laughs> login information. There you go. She can access it one day and uh, they can say, hey, you know, I had a lot of fun with dad. So, yeah. That's awesome, dude. Yeah, it's always good to. That's 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 like the best way to do it. I mean, yeah, man. and you're posting all like them on the. I saw you. He he was doing karate, uh, jujitsu, yep. jujitsu, jujitsu. Dude, yep. I wanted to yep. ask you that. Like, would it? What like? Do you think that it's obviously important to mm -hmm. to have kids in like an active lifestyle? Obviously yeah. nowadays, because nowadays kids are just fucking sitting at home and Absolutely, just man. Absolutely. on the phone yep. and on the iPad. And that's I, I don't think I ever did. No, my brother did karate. But you did too. Well, still you you were in a non traditional sport, right? You were into something that that I would push my kid more towards than traditional sports. Not that there's anything wrong with traditional sports, but I've always had a more uh, more of an appreciation, I guess, for non traditional. Like you know, you were into motocross, yeah. right? Uh, I was big into ATVs and dirt bikes in my area. They didn't really offer. I mean, the closest gym to me that I grew up in this little town that I grew up in, and I'm not knocking it in any way. I love where I grew up. I love so much about you know, growing up in a, in a small town living, but yeah. the closest gym was a YMCA, probably 45 minutes away from me. We oh. didn't even have a gym. So there was no big sports offered. Yeah. There was no jujitsu. There was no wrestling schools. We didn't have football. Damn, we didn't have, we well, didn't have guess, any yeah. of that. So most people, if you didn't do a traditional sport, the ones that were offered through the high school, like, you know, basketball, yeah. baseball, the basic ones, you were out doing other shit like riding quads, riding dirt bikes. That's what I was doing growing up. I was riding exactly quads. I was riding did. dirt bikes, and yep. not on a professional level like yourself because it wasn't offered in my area. Yeah, but, but did I see something that you did freestyle moto or something? In my family, 
No, I don't know. I feel like you talked about something with freestyle or some shit. Or am I going crazy? No, we were talking about just being a huge fan of Travis Pastrana. Oh, you know probably what I mean? that, yeah. yeah. And that's, yeah. So, no, I, I grew up, always had, you know, I mean, my first dirt bike I ever got was probably when I was like seven years old. I got a little Honda 50 and uh, fell in love with it, you know. So, I grew Damn. up doing that. But There's nothing again, like that, dude. Nothing like it. Nothing. And I, my, just went riding, I just went riding in Nashville. First in time in a while. Did yeah. You? With that Taylor Holder kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The kid yeah, that yeah, dances yeah. on TikTok. Yeah. I was like, yo. I won't look at you like the way you are on TikTok. If you go on the track right now and get on a bike and throw your leg over that bike and you hit every single jump on this track, That's awesome. I will look at you completely different. Well, the big one, uh, what's her name? Um, uh, what's the country chick that she she sponsors the huge race, the dirt bike race out there every year? It's in Nashville, right? Isn't that Nashville? Oh, oh, Loretta Lynn's. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah can't even say And he name, went to that race. Yeah, yeah. And he told me that, and I was like, yeah. and then he started telling me, and I'm like, dude. And that's another kid that does all that cringy stuff. Mm. I'm like, bro. If you do sports like that and you post that, right? Nobody's gonna talk. Do I know shit. this kid. What, what does he do? You, he I've, I, dude, I used to. I have columns of roasting the hell out of him. He'll pull okay. it up. I used to. He, he was one of those kids that lived out in L.A. and like he had like in a uh, in a. Oh, and you guys linked up, like buried the hatchet, and you did so some content he, together. He was a kid that like a lot of these kids when I roast them. Oh, I think I saw this interview, bro. He, he's, yeah. Like he had the dangly earring, everything that yeah, I just yeah. despise. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he but was he rides. Of, what? He rides or you made him ride? No. So he like lived at a training facility and like went to Loretta's, qualified for Loretta's. Like, and I didn't know anything about this. And then I was roasting this kid because I only knew him through making cringe content, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I was like, he was a lot of the kids that I make fun of, they always message me and they're like, You're a piece of shit, blah, blah, blah. You'll never do anything. But I'm like, bro, it's all jokes. Like, yeah, chill out. Yeah, like, yeah, I'm just right. I'm joking around. I'm a New York kid. I love to roast people. It is right. what it is. And then he was one that was like, yo, this is mad funny. Like, he appreciates it. And I was like, all right, like he's he's like not mad about dude, it. 5.1. Fuck. Yeah, dude. Holy he's shit. he's huge. So oh, then, so like, he's like a he's like a music music musician. Now, but, but that's what people make fun of him because he went from being a TikTok dancer and he switched. Uh, so everyone's like, but they don't know his like full backup story, whatever. Um, but yeah, and, and then he he rode, and I was like, dude, why don't you fucking po why don't you post this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nobody will talk shit anymore. So you went out there and met him. I went out there. He that's awesome. he uh, he had a. We went to a private track in this dude's backyard. That's sick, dude. Bro. I had the time of my life. So you guys shot a bunch of content together. A bunch man. of content is that on your. Yeah, we're, we're still like we're Upload making like it. a vlog out That's of it. Cool. I, I I literally bought a GoPro just for the trip. I bought the brand new GoPro, put it on the helmet. That's um, sick. But no, yeah, that was fun. But um, <sighs> so what, what was I saying before? Completely we were talking about posting. Oh, kids. Torque sent you shit though. The what? They sent me stuff too. Torque. Oh, did they? They sent you a big yeah. care package. I saw you post that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Torque's awesome. Yeah. But I don't. But yeah. they, they they send you. Do you have like a street bike right now? No, I got a Harley now. First yeah, time Harley. ever. Harley's so bad. First time ever, bro. So I rode. I was always like, I was pretty into. Oh, that's probably what you're talking about. I was never into dirt bike extreme, mm. but I rode for like a freestyle street yeah. bike team. I got some videos on YouTube and shit back in the day. I gotta see that. Yeah. What you were you pull, doing? Wheelies and shit? Yeah. I mean, this is this is before. Like, I'm old school. Old school. This is before. Like, I was good before handbrakes even came in. You know, guys are running handbrakes. That's what my now, brother uses. Doing circle wheelies yep. and stuff. I yep. was all street. Engine brake and no handbrake. I put a handbrake on my my bike towards the end of me, um, you know, getting into that world. But I never really mastered it the way the guys are now. But uh, so so my last bike I had, my last street bike I had was a KTM RC8R, sick like a fucking track bike basically. Yeah, yeah. And I just was always riding the wheels off it, man, just doing crazy shit. And I'm like, I got two kids now. I got so a yeah, couple yeah, years ago I sold it, bought a Harley. So I'm on a Harley now, but I'm still. <sighs> Fucking burning the wheels off that thing, you know what I mean? So you wheeling that thing, you probably can't. Really I, I, you can, guys can. Mine's not really set up to because you rip your back fender off, you yeah. rip your bags off. Mine's not set up to, but I, if I get good enough where I'm getting it up tall enough where I need to cut them, I'll cut them. I'm not, I'm not there yet. I got the rolling burnouts down pretty good though. Yeah. But uh, there you go. Well, yeah, that turns you into a man. That'll put hair in your nutsack. Yeah, man. Yep. Everybody listening, if you want to put hair in your nutsack, gotta ride a fucking dirt bike or. Quad, don't ride a quad though. Yeah, road not, rash will humble you really quickly. I don't like I don't like quads. That's nah, why I, keep, I got a quad now, but not not to do anything. Just it's crazy funny. On Caitlyn two Jenner wheels. was Bruce Jenner right before he wrote a, he wrote a quad, and then he turned into Caitlyn Jenner. <laughs> so I'm like, whoa! <laughs> no, he was, he's, he's into the UTVs, isn't he? He's into not quads. I don't know, yeah, I don't know I think what he's, he's into the, now. I yeah. mean, <laughs> it's, but I know, I know. You're looking at my glasses right now. Looks like I have a couple flat screen TVs on my face here. I look like a little bit of a 
movie star. If you want to look like a movie star, you got to be repping the movie star style glasses. And in order to get these type of glasses, you got to get them at Nev and I wear. And guess what, fellas? They're running in a phenomenal deal. You buy one of these motherfuckers, you get two free. So you got to be an idiot to not want them. Nevaneyewear.com. Get yourself some shades. Make yourself look like a star. Let's get back to the episode. My main question with like living down here in the Jer- like the Jersey Shore, especially me, I'm like literally in the mix of everything. Mm. What do you think is like? What do you think makes like the Jersey Shore? So I know obviously the show like made it like all famous and stuff like that. But like, what do you think? Like, obviously the girls too. Mm. But like, is the bars? You think like the greatest thing about like the Jersey Shore? Like the name of it and. Like living well, here? you know, obviously the uh, the attraction is the, the beaches, right? The beaches are beautiful I down love here. The I'm not really a beach guy. But no, the beaches. I'm not. I never hung out on the beach ever. What? Now, I just never did it. I was never into it. Ever. I just. It just seems like such a waste of time to me on a beautiful day where you could do a million things to take a towel and go lay on you a never beach rode for waves five before, hours. dude. No. You're lame as no. hell, bro. <laughs> are you kidding I'm me? Dusty? Am I dusty? Yeah. <laughs> No, oh I never get into it. Never and you know, you know what's it. crazy? Growing up, I always loved the beach. So you surf too? Okay, I got it. That'll yeah, you, really you make You look me a like a boogie guy. boarder to me. No, you yeah. got that boogie boarder this fucking guy's cutting hug. my ass. <laughs> a boogie boarder. What do I sit when I pee? That's ridiculous. <laughs> Jesus. I do love boogie board. No, I like the skim board. That was my main thing. But I got, I want to, it sucks because I see all the dudes when I wake up in the morning, I see them surfing right in front of my yeah. house. And I'm like, oh, like I would So love, you never got into it? No. So why are you ripping on me, man? Yeah, I know. I have the surfboard <laughs> in my house, though. So, and I sometimes a girl will be like, I see the surfboard. Do you surf? I'm like, yeah. I'm certified and pro. Yeah, Meanwhile, there's, some, there's some guys around here that are, that are pretty good. Jer- Jersey, I feel like, doesn't get uh, – and there's some good – listen, these storms lately – Yo, bro, there was like twenty foot plus waves. Yo, that recently. storm. Yeah, the other day, when it, what was it like two days ago? Well, two days ago, but the one like a week ago or, or a week and a half. Bro, ago, I had sand in like my living yeah, room. That dude. one was. I mean, they said it's the biggest waves these surf guys have Nuts. ever seen. Sometimes they're what they call uh, like a washing machine, right? You can't surf them. These ones were big barrels, man. You could totally surf them. So, so my daughter, uh, her name is Milani. Her, mm. uh, she's named after Bethany Hamilton. Whose middle name is Milani? Bethany Milani Hamilton. No idea. You don't know? Oh, you're talking shit about surfing. You yeah, know, bro, she's like one of the best surfers of all time. She's the girl with one arm. She got her arm bit off oh, by, a, by, the, by a great. By she's got a the, movie yo, yes, made no, after no. Her the, the, that. That movie was yeah. great. I so anyway, she threw a big surf school thing, competition thing in Ocean, right next to Asbury. So right there, just okay. up the beach a little bit. And we took Milani when she was like two and a half to go meet her because she's named after her, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Not really named after her, but the name was, uh, it was just a beautiful name, so we named our daughter Milani, but it means heavenly flower in Hawaiian. Wow. So, yeah. Creative. So, uh, I got named after a dog. Yeah, I know. I know. That's great. That's My great. name used to be Hunter, though. I thought it was a fake name. I told you that I when know. you came Everyone on the show. Everyone always says it, like, let me see your ID. It does not like sound it. like... Like Duke Gomez does not sound like a nor it sounds like a pseudonym. It really my name is. was it was Hunter Gomez for a little bit. Was it? And then my mom was like, Yeah, I saw a dog commercial. I like, she always tells me this. I, I still to this day believe it, I think, because <laughs> I've never met a human with my name. But I like that because it's kind of unique. Hey, it's got definitely my name. unique, man. It's definitely unique. That's dope. So Hurricane Sandy. Mm-hmm. What kind of I mean, obviously that affected so much shit going on and like I remember mm-hmm. see, when that went down, seeing like the roller coasters in the water. Yep. And I mean, was there anything that got like washed away that was like. Well, that was, they call it like the 100 year storm, right? It was like, uh, was crazy. they say every century we get a storm like that. You know what I mean? So um, for me, uh, I owned a home, not on the beach, not even really that close, kind of near the bay, I guess, probably like four blocks more than that probably like five, six blocks away from the bay. Yeah. And my house had a foot and a half of water in it, so it got completely bombed out. It took like 14 months to rebuild it to make oh, it even And when they again. rebuilt it, they put it on like crazy... I only went up three and a half feet because they have to do all these these surveys and all this shit to see how high you can go. Yeah, they have to yeah. do like a structural load-bearing test on your foundation, all this stupid yeah. shit. But anyway, so I went up three... So mine's not like not one of those ones where you walk straight up steps to get into it. It's not that high, but I had to go up three and a half feet to make it... Bro, uh, I was... I didn't have yeah. my, when what year was that? Eleven, right? Two thousand eleven. Oh yeah, I didn't have my, I didn't have my house. I was still back at home, but I was like, Belmar's always been the go-to for me ever mm-hmm. since I was like six years old. Belmar is one of my favorite spots, man. It's clean. I like Belmar. I like the crowd. I like the people. I like the beaches. It doesn't seem like it gets a lot of riffraff because I mean, you think about it, beaches are free. Beaches, so you get a lot of riffraff, be, right? It was. It used to be cleaner. 
It's not as good as it used to be. No, no beaches, but it's still one of the better ones around. You think you, it's you way better than back home in New York, bro? You yeah. walk around, you just, you got to watch out for rats Needles. and shit. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, everything's getting worse, but but that's like the world we're living in. It's getting it is. nuts. It sure is. But um, so I want to talk about um karma, the, and, the bar because recently, yeah, that was like I used to always. Did someone did someone die there? In a fight? No, I, oh. I I don't know. That's the only thing that I ever remember hearing. There's a lot of there's a lot of babies born out of there. I don't know oh. if anybody died. There's a lot of procreation that went on. A lot on of there. walking STDs <laughs> coming out of that, John. Oh my God, my my kid would be if someone's kid in there would be nine years old today if CVS wasn't <laughs> yeah, open. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> how was uh how was like the scene there? Was it like it was for a kid from Maine? You know, because because that's honestly, I mean, if I'm if I'm being honest, that's. That's what, for me, I came here, I won't give you the whole extended long version, but yeah. I came down just to visit. My parents got divorced. They, they, you know, my dad's from Maine. My mom moved back there with her. My mom's a Jersey girl. She's from Glen Rock, North, okay. North Jersey. She moved back here after they got divorced, but her parents had relocated to Tom's River, so she was in Tom's River to be closer to them. Yeah. My sister came down shortly after. She was in the, uh, the Army National Guard, and she had a, oh, a, a baby. So I came down to visit my niece. And my sister took me out. You know, my niece was like six months old or whatever. My niece, my uh, sister took me to Seaside one night, and I was like, this dorky kid from Maine. I didn't think was I was your a, first time. I didn't think I was a dork in Maine. I thought I was a cool kid. And then yeah, you come yeah. to Jersey. Now you're now you're you know you're a, a little fish in a big pond. Oh here. yeah. And I just the 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 nightlife, the girls, the the cars, the scene. And this was probably in like ninety eight, probably yeah ninety eight, right? Summer ninety eight, I guess. And. Uh, I was like, man, I, I'm fucking moving here. I'm gonna go back and tell my dad. I was working for you my like dad in the family. Right away. I went right back and told my dad. I was like, hey, listen, I think you know, probably be temporary. He's like, yeah, go down, spend a summer. You know, you'll be back. That was 25 years ago. I never they went always back. come back. Yeah, yeah. I no, never I didn't go seaside, back. But I, I'm just not. As, nah. Well, I don't know how it was back then. It was different back then. It was the. It was, in my opinion, it was like the heyday. And then, of course, you know, the show rolled in. That kind of revived it again. And uh, that I can't believe, like. It's actually mind blown. Like I, I never, to be honest with you, I never actually watched the show. Mm. Like very rarely watch the show. I, like always my, it, I always say it'll rot your brain. Don't do it. I, I've, <laughs> I've maybe watched like one or two. My mom though was like, yeah. To this day, she's like, I don't know why. And then that's why she, yeah. she, she found out that I ran into you. She was like, <laughs> No way. You ran into Rods. I'm like, Yo, slow your roll, man. <laughs> chill out, like yeah. relax. That's that's aging me right there. Usually the moms, when I talk to people your age, are always like, Dude, my mom loves you. And I'm like, Yeah, that's that's how you know you're old. Yeah, but that's nice though. That's cool. You got that's the cool. moms. Yeah. Can't complain hey. about that. Hey. I would love that. Choosy moms, choose Roger. Yeah. <laughs> so, but uh, what was like? So being on, obviously, with the show and, like, all that stuff going on, obviously, it blew up the Jersey Shore. Mm -hmm. um, was it, was any of that, like, scripted? Probably the number one question I'm asked is that question. People always ask you that? That's always the question I get asked, always. Is I have scripted? a feeling it kind of scripted, and everybody's like, they think I'm going to give them some inside scoop or something, and then I tell them the answer, and they're like, really? They think I'm lying to them. Honestly, it's not scripted, meaning they don't tell you what to say. Scripted would be right. They give you a like a script to read or they say, hey, say this or do this. It was never it was never like that. You know what I mean? I'm not I'm not defending the show. The show has got its own success. It doesn't need me to promote it yeah. or bury it. It's not going to affect the show in any way, no matter what I say. Right. But, you know, the truth, the truth is the truth. Right. So I was never none of nobody that I ever saw was ever told what to say um, now. Obviously, you know, they want exciting things to happen. So, you know, there, there might be um, some, some push to make exciting things happen, but it's never like say this. But you also got to remember that cast didn't need any pushing. They were all eccentric oh. characters, you know. And, and the other thing people don't understand is they removed all forms of communication and, and technology from them. There was no TVs in the house, none. Oh, really? There was no. They yeah, just had that duck no phone. Cell, nobody had a cell phone. They took their the, the day they start filming. They take their cell phone from. They don't get it back till they're done filming. Literally. Holy shit. Yeah, so they can't like text each other like, you know, they can't like, you know, if there's some secret, they they have to, you know, socialize. That's the only way. And then you add alcohol and then you got fireworks, you know what I mean? They didn't even have a pen or paper to write notes. You know what I mean? The only oh note they ever God. had so was So it's like you were just you were just destined to yeah, want to knock yeah, someone out. Exactly. If I don't have my phone after a while yeah, and I hear yeah, chirping, I just exactly. oh my God. And then God. you add copious amounts of alcohol. 
and and you have you know these eccentric personalities well, trapped in a house and you know in seaside in the in the in oh the my God. in the heyday of the club scene you know what i mean it's going to be fireworks man and it was it was the perfect um i guess you know uh script not script because you just asked me if it was scripted it was the perfect scenario for a great show you know Dude, wait, mean? You, so, but you were they were allowed to like go wherever they wanted no no oh, so uh yeah. So you you that that is one thing that uh, I wouldn't call it a script, but there's a book, literally a book that they put in the middle of the the kitchen or the living room in the beginning of every season, and it's got a list of like where a hundred places you can go to, and they're all mom and pop places or privately owned. They're never franchises. You can't go to like Shoprite. You can't go because no corporation is ever going to sign off to have this film crew. Oh, these yeah, bunch true. of wild kids. They're all mom and pops place that want the exposure, or you know, well that's why they were always in like a small family owned gym, or you know, they're never in like you know fucking L.A. Fitness or something like yeah, that. Yeah. It's, that's why, and that's most reality shows. You know what I mean? So, so, but the other thing is you can't have. I mean, even though there's cameras everywhere because that show had a I huge budget. Ask that next. You know, there's cameras everywhere, mounted in the ceiling, 24-7 filming, all this shit, what makes it really Bro, awkward to try to, like, hook fuck? up with your, yeah, you're, you're trying, it's like, you know, you're still, you're, atta- you're smashed Even when you're cracking in the yeah, sheets, yeah. I got cameras in Oh, it's in right there? above your head, bro, yeah. Now, oh. they can't put that shit on TV, but you know there's a bunch of producers watching it yeah, in the back room, you wow. know what I mean? So, yeah. Imagine being a producer at a yeah. show, he's oh, like, the, titties! The stuff they've seen, bro, the stuff they've seen, they could blackmail everybody. Yo, oh, yeah, for that's sure. crazy. Yeah. yeah, there was just tons of cameras everywhere. How annoying was that? I mean, it was, was there ever a time you were like, yo, get it was, the, get it was exciting. I was a lot younger back then. You, you couldn't pay me enough to do it now, but it was exciting because it was like, I was younger. And the other part was, you know, I, uh, I didn't try out for that. I never thought in a million years I'd ever be part of anything like this. Yeah, it wasn't just like fell I tr- it just fell into my yeah. lap, you know. I never I wasn't trying to be part of it or auditioning for it or anything like that. It literally landed in my lap and in in, in hindsight, despite, you know, some of the nastiness and messiness and obviously divorce now and all that, to have the two kids I would have, bro, I'd do it all over again, you know what I mean? So, you know, everything happens for a reason, but, you know, at the time there was a lot of it was a lot of excite excitement to yeah. it, I guess. So Did Your kids ever like see it? Uh, well, they're, they're, they're on the, the they're on the, I don't I'll watch it now. And again, no hate to my ex, no hate to the yeah. show, nothing like they don't, they don't need my endorsement, but you know, I, I'm not crazy about two little kids being part of it. I don't really know what goes on. I hear it's much more calm now and I don't know, but regardless, they're, they're part of yeah. it to some degree, I guess. Yeah. And listen, Hey, listen, mom does well from it and yeah, my yeah. kids will go to a really nice college I because of that it, it's so. still rolling though. Hey, listen, they they I guess MTV's uh That's nuts. Need some need some shows. So that's wild. Well, I can't believe that. There's cameras in every room. That's still every room, man. Mounted the ceiling. And those and there's they're remote. So there's someone, you know, there's a there's a producer or a camera yeah. person sitting in the trailer. And they must they must like way in the back they must with be some, you see it, you can yeah. hear it, like you can see it moving, you know, in the middle of the night. Like, yeah. If and you then move it moves. breaks out, buddy's hopping out of yeah. his fucking TV, like, yo, yeah. I gotta catch this guy oh, yeah. knocking this yeah. dude out. My nuts are definitely on camera. Oh, <laughs> nice, yeah, dude. Yeah, for sure. Dude's got his berries out. Wow, that's insane. Uh, I, I, I get like, because my one buddy now that wants to do like be on a show and all that stuff, I just feel like. I, ah. I'm telling you, man, it's not what. You it's think. like, I see the same thing. It's like a chick having an it's OnlyFans account. Think. It's not what you think. It's, it's not like it's think. on the internet forever. You know, I get like worried with shit like that. I mean, first of all, the odds of being part of a successful one are very yeah. slim. Now, that that's one in a million that shows. And I'm not, again, defending it, promoting it, plugging it, whatever. It's just, it's just the fact. It's a yeah. one in a million show. Did tremendously well. Um, again, I think I think the casting was was really good on it. But the part that people don't understand, and again, I think you know some of it is just naivety because you don't you don't know unless you be unless you've been part of it. How would you know? Yeah, you're 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 trading off your personal life. That's what if you're a reality star, it's not you're not an actor. You're giving a piece of your personal your life, life yeah. to yep. the world. Usually the worst of the worst. It's usually they're not going to put the best of the best on because it. And they'll know. clip shit too, right? Yeah, of course they'll edit stuff that's because because so that's what people want to see. People go to a hockey. A lot of people go to a hockey uh, game see to watch fight. a fight. Yeah. You know, a lot of people go to NASCAR to see the wrecks. You know what I mean? So same thing in this. And then once you give your your personal world, you know, your personal life to the world, I guess then Damn, everything you do for the rest of your life is kind of out there. You know what I mean? So man, you don't know unless like you're. And you're gonna fall. You're gonna trip. You're gonna make mistakes. Trust me, I did. 
and everybody's going to see it. You know what I mean? You're just human. You're not perfect. So, and you're going to get judged harshly when you do fall. The you know what I mean? Attack, bro. Yeah. Oh yeah. And then they don't. It's they only don't online. Surrender. It's never in person. It's only online. They never yeah. do it. In I got. I need to really, really realize that more. They never do it in person. I don't know what you ever your had experience. Someone? Never. Never once. Never once. I remember when I was married. I remember one time we were on a plane, and. Um, as soon as we got off the plane, I don't. I think she had an appearance somewhere, maybe vague. I don't even know where we were, but there was some guy that was on the plane that said to her, not to me, I was a nobody, you know what I mean, but said, um, hey, can I take a picture with you? And, uh, and again, no knock to her. Usually she's pretty gracious with it, but I think we were in a hurry to get the baggage check. She said, not right now, maybe whatever. And this guy was like, oh, he goes, oh, fuck you then. I'm going to fucking film you. And now he's like selfie mode walking in front of us. Like, just being a douche. It's the only time I ever remember meeting a douche. The guy yeah. was just a douche because she said, I don't know if she said no, but she said not right now or whatever. Yeah, and he was just being like a annoyed. douche. He's like, oh, how you like me now? You know, fucking walking in front of us, you know. But Do you get mobbed when you go out? You get no, recognized bro, like crazy? I'm a nobody. Come on. I, it was five years ago I was on that trip. More than that. I have, I've been divorced almost five years. So um, I would yeah, never, you stand out I would like never a say thumb, mobbed, but... You know, maybe, maybe. DJs, though, bro. <laughs> yeah, well. Yo. I get what, you know what I get when I walk into DJs? And I went to DJ. I, I always tell you, I go like, I go like once a year for like two hours, right? I just pop in. Yeah. Because it used to be my jam. It used to, it makes me feel my youth again when I walk in there. Yeah. But the kids are so young in there now. It makes bro. me, now I feel like a pervert being in there. But I went last summer um, because we had a gig at Headliner and my buddy Max was coming oh, with yeah, me. I remember you saying that. So we just popped in there real quick because Headliner was right down mm. the street, right? We were there for probably less than an hour, but uh, it's the young kids that can't quite place me, and then they figure it out, and they're like, dude, let me FaceTime my mom. My mom loves you. No you know way, I mean? really? Yeah, it's always the moms. Always the moms, yeah. Damn. That yeah. is, bro, that's mad funny. <laughs> I, I'm, that place really, like. Do you dig it or not? It's right around the corner from you. Yeah. To love, hate? right there. It's just like, you have to literally you have to be in there and not even know what your name is to just enjoy it. You do. It's packed. And I get like, and and everybody's so drunk in there. Mm. And then when they like recognize me in there because it's a young crowd, like I, that's the only time I really get recognized when I'm in like a, a scenery where the kids are like my age, mm. dude, it's like they're spilling drinks. Second I get a drink spilled on me, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah, you're annoyed. I'm tying the yep. laces and I'm out of there. Yep. I hate that. And then, and then when I start sweating like yep. a sardine, yep. Bro, then it starts to stink, yeah. and then I get a napkin on my face. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, over yeah, it, dude. Yeah, yeah. I can't. But that's what, what that's the worst place to go. Then is DJs because that's everything. You that's just a said good place to go though when you after like going to a bunch yeah, of bars, and right, then you go there at that right, night. Right, right. Especially for me because it's right the there. One that, oh, Parker House. Parker Love House that place. is better. I think Parker House is better for me at my age. Yes, but vibe, the people in there chiller. I would make fun of because they yeah, wear boat shoes and Daisy Dukes. Yeah, yeah, they're all rich kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All rich kids with with daddy's money and the dad, and they got boat shoes, but they don't even have a boat, so it doesn't even make any sense. Why are you wearing the boat shoes, pal? <laughs> Were you pulling out a rower and busting out the canoe? <laughs> it's crazy. I like yeah. I like uh, I like Jenks. Jenks. But like is, now, when you go there, now you it's. I went to Jenks twice over the summer, and it was you probably walked in and more walked down. packed than DJs. It was insane packed. You know, I went outside because I'm friends with you know usually encore there DJ encore. Oh I yeah, just jump oh, yeah, in the yeah, booth yeah. with encore because it's too packed to even walk around. You know, I like being people like that place. I li like I like bar. I like just I like to talk. You yep. can't talk in places no. like DJs. Music's too loud. You can't. Yeah, you're talking to a girl for three hours. You yeah. don't even know her name. You don't even know what she's and she doing. don't even know what you look like. And then yeah. you bring her home and the lights come on and it's like whoa. Yeah yeah yeah. yeah. You got to go back inside. Yeah. <laughs> That's not what I thought you looked like. That's the worst when the lights come on and yeah. you're like whoa. I and feel like though, at least, at least, and obviously, alcohol plays a part in that, and 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 the lighting in there, and the girl is gonna look her absolute best. But I feel like at least you can make a judgment call because she's right in front of you. You can be like, okay, I got to figure in this factor. I'm drunk, right? The yeah. lighting in here is working to her benefit. She's got a lot of makeup on. She probably got extensions in. You know, she's not gonna look like this in the morning. But you can make a judgment call based on that. Yeah. What girls post online oh, is totally different. It is. It it's is totally different. It's a fraud. It's, a, I, I it's think fraud. You it's, should get arrested. Yeah, it's absolute fraud. And the worst is with the dating apps nowadays. Yep, yep. And I've had that happen to me before. It was the one time that I ever took a girl on a date. It was from Tinder. I remember this. I was like, whoa, this chick's hot as fuck. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm over here. I got a big ass nose. I don't know what this chick thinks of me. <laughs> and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to take her out for some ice cream because that's a go-to date. Absolutely. Very cheap, plain and simple. 
you know, I have my cookies and cream. I do my <laughs> thing. And then I'm like, I'm hanging out. I, I go to pick her up. She gets in the car. And I'm like, oh, you got to be fucking kidding me. It wasn't even her. It was just like. She's a 10 little on the, the hefty side. Like, I'm like, yeah. bro, come on. Oh, so all her pictures were like this then? Yeah. yeah she was yeah, up yeah, close yeah. and personal, like yeah. me and my videos. Because yeah. everybody sees me in person. They think that I'm like 6'3". Yeah, yeah. Like, nah, I'm like a 5'4 kind of guy. Yeah, but you don't try. It's not like you're trying to be 6'3". Nah. Frankie's a good example of that. Bro, I was a fan of him I was, that through, was go. through UFC TV before I ever met him. And I'm like, dude, this is He's like a baby Hercules. A killer. And don't get it twisted. Frankie's a killer. He's a fucking baby killer. Baby Hercules. But you look at him and you're like, wait, I thought he was huge. He's not huge. I watched his video. I yeah. watched, I, I don't watch UFC, but I wanted to watch a little bit before I came on your podcast just mm. so that like I knew a little bit about it. And I'm watching this motherfucker's highlights yep. and I'm like, Yo, yeah. he's fighting like this, but he's beating that oh, guy's yeah. fucking ass. Yeah. That's he's crazy. only ever, I think he's got like 30 fights in the UFC. He fought for 16 years in the UFC, and I think he only ever fought two guys smaller than him. Like height was. Wow. Yeah. Chad Mendez was one of them. Meanwhile, his reach is probably not even that like long. Dude, listen, I've I've rolled with that dude. I've never actually physically fought him, but I rolled with him. He he, he, he don't get it to it. Don't look at that little dude and think you're gonna kick his ass because nope. you ain't. <laughs> Once you see the cauliflower, yeah, though, yeah, I back yeah. away from those people. Exactly. You, how did you meet him? Did you I met well, I was a fan of UFC okay. and I had a bunch of mutual friends that I knew that knew him. Yeah. So I'd met him a bunch of times out. This is back in I know you don't probably don't even know what this is, but the sawmill. They used to have mm. the green room upstairs. Sawmill's still there, but they used to have this club upstairs called the green room. Okay. Um and everybody hung out in the green room back in the day. So um I saw Frankie there a couple times Fanboy. with and I was like, Oh, introduce me to him, you know what I mean? So they introduced me. So I like had met him before, but I didn't know him, know him. Yeah. And then he started teaching some MMA classes at the barn in Jack, this legendary place called the barn in Jackson. Yeah. And I was like, I'm, I'm going, I was a fan. Oh, I was like, I'm going to go train. You know what I mean? So I started training and then we got to be friendly in there. And then he rode a motorcycle and this is, we were just talking about, I was pretty sick. On Did a he reach the back, pedals? Back then. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I can't, is he going to, is he going to no, kill me? A motorcycle. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so we rode home one time on motorcycles together. And I was like, cause I was such a fan of him. I was like, I was trying to, I was trying to show off. I was trying to impress him. And I was just throwing down on this. I had a full on stunt bike, you know, like, like. Um, straight bars on it, you know, had 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 uh, like a scrape bar on the back yeah. and all this shit. So I was killing. I was on the way back. I was just riding wheelies for miles. Oh, my man, showing off, showing off like crazy. <laughs> and then I crash right in front of him. I just fucking Dead? threw it back too hard. Hit the smack the bar. Came down too hard. Went over the handlebars. Bike ran me over, and Holy he shit. missed me by probably. A foot, not even. I would have taken him out. Thank oh. God he missed me, and I didn't wreck Frankie. Can you imagine that ending his UFC career? Oh I, yeah, that was showing off in front of him. Shit. And and you know, by the time he got stopped and turned around, I already I broke my collarbone, but I already had the bike up. I had it, you know, sitting on the side of the road. I was like, "Yo, call somebody with a truck." And anyway, we got it out of there. But after that crash, we just became friends. Hell yeah, yeah. So then, how did the pot like was? Yeah, I told I've, I've told this story. It's kind of funny because because Frankie, I don't know, he he tells a little different version of it, but. Years later, he passes me. I, I work a normal union job, right? I'm a mm. union guy. So anyway, uh, I pass him on the road. I'm in my work truck. And he calls me. And I, I swear, this is exactly what he said to me. This is probably like, I've been doing the podcast four years, probably like five years ago. He calls me and he says, hey, man, what's up? He's like, I just passed you. I was like, yeah, I know. I saw you. He's like, you, uh, you ever think about doing a podcast? That's what Wait, he said. Wait, you asked him that? No, he asked oh, me. Oh, he asked you that. You ever think about doing a podcast? How would you interpret that? Have I, I ever thought about doing a podcast, like starting my own podcast? That's how I took it. Yeah. I didn't know he meant with him. Oh, with, oh, I see. What uh, you he mean. just said, Have you ever thought about doing a podcast? He's like, You listen to him? I was like, I listen to Rogan a little bit, but I was like, No, I never really thought about it. He's like, Okay, man, cool. I'll catch you later. Click, hangs up the phone, right? So I never thought about it again. I'm like, Why, would, why the fuck would Frankie <laughs> talk to me? Why would he think I'm going to start a podcast, yeah. right? So uh, probably a year went by, and then a mutual friend, another UFC fighter, Chris Ligori, text me one day or dm me one day and he's uh -huh. like hey man i think you and frankie would be you just come from different worlds different yeah, yeah. personalities different vibe you know i think you'd make for a dynamic duo do a i was like bro is that what he meant when he called me like a year ago and said he's like yeah man he wanted to see pick your brain and see if you'd be interested so right after that we got on it and started started and building now, room and yeah. now i'm at you 200 200 yeah i think we just did 201 i think 201 what is that? That's got to be because don't they? What do they say that if the most percentage don't even go past like it's, twenty episodes? Oh, I don't even think it's twenty. I think it's like five or something. Most most episodes. The, Dude, the, I'm on thirteen and I'm yeah. hurting. 
Yeah? I'm hurting, bro. Why? Explain it. What do you mean hurting? I'm just like, it, it just feels like I've done 40 of them. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, it'll do that to you. The podcast world is a tough world, man. I mean, because like I'm lo- just January. locally, when we started, there was like three other local ones in our area, like the Tom's River area. They're like, oh, man, we got a collab. This is great. They, bro, yeah. they went out. They weren't even 10 episodes in, and they were done. So, um, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's definitely a tough build. I think there's something like almost a million podcasts just in the U.S. It's like 800-something th- thousand. That's the last time I heard. That was probably back Everyone's when we were starting. Podcast podcast Everybody now, has a podcast. It's crazy. So consistency is all I can say. Oh, it is. We're not the best. That's for sure. I mean, there's, you know, we're not, not trying to compare ourselves. We have fun with it, too. But we have fun. Uh, I would do it for free, which... For the most part, we do. We're not really free, but we have some good sponsors. But mm. we're not breaking in retirement money or anything like that. And that's what we always said to each other. I was like, yeah. bro, listen, it's just our bro sesh. Let's come down here, try to put out some good content. Have a couple beers. Have talk a couple some beers, shit. talk some shit, get yeah. our feelings out there. And uh, that's what we've go. been doing. But the key is, with anything, consistency. We've yeah. never, ever missed a Tuesday recording, except for when Frankie's away at a training camp. That's yeah, the only yeah. time we've ever missed, ever. Wow. So, so what's this? What's this movie that you guys are in? It's called The Bastard, Bastard Sons. Sons. Uh, guy that that wrote it, direct. Well, he didn't Is write it, it but directed it. It's out. It's on uh, Amazon, iTunes. Um, I don't know if it's on uh, Netflix or not. It might be. I saw somebody, one of the guys, posted today on all streaming platforms. So I would assume that's Netflix. But anyway, uh, it's sort of a. Uh, like a mob, like yeah. A, like, it's like, it's like modern day gangster, kind of like uh, the so brothers meets Sopranos almost. <laughs> uh, Frankie has a pretty significant role. He plays one of the brothers in it, so he's got a pretty. I got a pretty small role, but uh, you know my character is big. I'm kind of like a like the enforcer in there. And you think uh, I could do acting? I beat a cop. Could you? Yeah, you think I should do it? I think put you me in that show. I think you got a you got to show up yeah. looking like the Undertaker with my eyes. Yeah, open. Like, ding, yeah. the guys here. Yeah, I mean, I think anybody could do it. It's just it's, it's do, people do, don't does, realize. Does it interest you when the camera goes on? Oh, okay. It's so different. Mm. It's so different. You start shaking. You start sweating. Like it's like it's crazy. You and and that's why everybody, yeah. whenever they're out drinking and they're all like they're messed up with their friend, like yo, we should start a podcast. Yep. I'm like, all right, bro. Yeah. Wait until all the cameras are exactly. set up and you have you're the camera sober. in front of your face. You're say, sober. It, say it again. Yeah, exactly. And then you're sober and you're not hammered. Yeah. Yeah. And then you're gonna you're gonna talk about stuff that's absolutely irrelevant. Yeah. But that's just people in general. You know, you can't blame them for that. Everybody yeah. thinks they're funnier than they actually are. But it's, you know, that's 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 just. People, but yeah. they figure it out real quick. That's why there's a million podcasts that's been canceled. You know what I mean? Crazy. So I gotta ask you something. Shoot, would you classify me as a Benny? What would is a I Benny? Classify- what is that? What, well, what if is- you're a Benny, then I'm a Benny. Because I'm not from. I, you know why I got called a Benny, and I still do it. Why? It's kind of embarrassing. When I go to the beach, um, I wear socks with sandals. <laughs> do you really? Yeah, I'm a dick. Wow, you don't like to feel the sand on your uh, feet? It's, it's, it's worse like, with socks because then sand gets in the sock. That's the worst. Yeah, but it's just like and I you feel, get it wet. It's like flopping out in front of you. Like, no, and then pull, I'll go pull, in the water pull. with the socks. Oh on. no, no, that's the worst. Yo, I gotta bring you to the that's beach the with worst. me one day. I'll go. My I've grandma. Been, it's not like would I've love never you, been before. It's not like I've never been, bro. I, I can remember the last time I went. I went uh, dude, so right in front of Sawmill. There's a private beach, right? Oh, okay. My buddy. Uh, my buddy's dad owns it, but my buddy kind of runs it. It's got the cabanas. It's like the nicest, this is the nicer part of the seaside beach. It's got the cabanas, the private cabanas. It's a private mm. beach. You can bring your own booze out there and stuff. It's like BYOB. Oh, it's um, kind of like a Don- like Donovan's. Yeah, kind of like Donovan's. No, Donovan's, you buy your alcohol there. You can't buy it. Oh, there. You, you can can't. bring it. You can oh, bring okay, it in like okay. a cooler with you, but you have to pay for your beach rental or your cabana or whatever. But anyway, last time I was there, I think it was last summer. Might might have been the summer before. Got a cabana. We're hanging out, and these uh, this chick she, she, and two dudes show up, and they they're like hanging in front of us. And it was clear they're all like gym rats, right? They're younger, but they're all gym. Even yeah. the chick was like jacked, or whatever. And she's you know, so we're kind of like looking at her, or whatever. She takes her shit off, lays down. There's two. She's with these two dudes. I guess they all work out together, or maybe one was her boyfriend. I don't fucking know. Yeah. But anyway, she lays down. She's facing the other way. Takes her her whatever sweats off she was wearing or whatever lays down and bro her fucking tampon string is hanging out <laughs> yes <laughs> i was like i'm never going back to the beach a little rat tail oh dude it was gross crazy shit goes down yo and you yeah. gotta watch now because those cops be giving out fat tickets on these beaches when they watch you drinking shit yeah it's that's wild. why you can on the private beach but you can't camp, but there's yeah. people that yeah. my friends tried doing it because you could do it back home you get away with everything back yeah. home in new york i'm like yo we're in jersey now yeah it's a little bit different than back at home boys See, i didn't realize that there was that viral video that went crazy viral i think the town got in a bunch of trouble um 
in Wildwood. You remember that? Like before COVID, so it was maybe like three summers ago or something where that girl, they were trying to arrest her for underage drinking. And it was these two cops. They were like oh, beach cops. That. Anyway, what, it, got, it got like it got pretty heated. I think they got in trouble because they were like putting their hands on her and shit. Wow, that's fucking crazy. Yeah, but yeah, they definitely cracked down on that shit. That's but, nuts. But so, what makes you a beach guy? Why do you like the beach, bro? How could you not like the beach? Cause, I, cause I have you, two things to fight you over: the beach and the fact that you don't like cauliflower. <laughs> what cauliflower? Yeah. How do you know that? I, I was I, I do research on shit. I was watching the thing and cauliflower got brought. Nobody I love likes cauliflower. Nobody actually likes cauliflower. Are You're you lying. kidding nobody me? Nobody likes cauliflower, bro. Burnt cauliflower nobody. is so good. That is disgusting. I can't even. Respect and I and I because I I heard I was like I have to bring that up. Cauliflower is incredible. I eat everything. Listen, I'll eat it, but it's probably the worst vegetable out there. Maybe squash. I don't know. What's uh, worse? Squash, no, squash is like wet poop. Yeah, yeah. Maybe squash is worse, but cauliflower is pretty bad. You're no. talking about that shit when they make it almost like a French fry. Is that what you're talking about? It's white. It's like yeah, white broccoli. That's what I'm talking about the way my mom used to make it, not the way you can get it now at these restaurants where they, no, they my, my mom deep makes, fry it. It almost looks like a French fry when it comes out. Oh, Is that maybe what you that's, mean? That probably tastes like dog shit. Yeah. But no, like my mom makes good cauliflower. Really? I'm like, Damn, this motherfucker don't like cauliflower. Damn, that's, that's your gripe with me? Is cauliflower? Yeah, all I the got kind of tight when I heard that. It kind of stabbed me a Damn. little bit. That all and now, the they, now you don't like the beach. I mean, I live on it, so it's, it's not that like, I don't like the beach. I could just well, think going of a is million a things I'd rather like. I'd rather okay, do, really yeah. nice day, right? Uh, now again, if it's a hundred and ten degree day, no. But if it's if it's eighty five degrees yeah, out, yeah. beautiful day in the sun, I want to be out on my bike, bro. That's where yeah, I want to yeah. be. I want to be out on the bike. Yeah. And if I'm not, I'm with my kids doing some shit. You, we got a pool in my backyard. Usually we're by the oh, pool. If you got a pool? Then or, yeah, you're, yeah you're, I'd you're rather chilling. be by my pool, c- cooking burgers and. You know, having beers and, you know, like you just said, you're going to get arrested if you crack yeah. open a beer at the beach. So Yeah, so I got this. You know, Frankie saw, uh, it was it was a big story. I actually knew her personally, but uh, there's nothing funny about this. I'm not trying to make a funny story. Frankie saw uh, in Seaside, uh, and my other friend, Tommy, too, saw a girl drown right in front of him, died. What? Yeah, a girl that, that we knew. She was oh, a yo- she yo- like, she like that. yoga instructor. She used to come to my house and give- Young girl? Uh, um, probably, uh, not, not young. She was, well, back then she was probably around my age, a little younger than me. So it was probably, she's probably in her like mid to late thirties. Yeah, crazy shit all the time. But she, um, she was there with her boyfriend and uh, nobody knows exactly what happened, but it was, uh, she was a good swimmer, talented swimmer. And he got out and she was in and then he just started yelling, screaming, freaking out. Like she's under, she's under a bunch of people jumped in, pulled her out and she bro, passed away, bro. Crazy. That's insane. Yeah, crazy. Can you imagine, can you imagine seeing thing. that? Another reason I don't like the beach. People die there. Yeah, that's one thing that I'm happy that my mom did. When I was like a little baby, she would just take me and just throw mm. me in the water. Yeah. She that's... was like, nah, go swim. So I'm our, a good swimmer. our daughter, we took to swim lessons, right? We took her to, to yeah. like a place where, you know, they put her in the pool. At a young they, age, right? And when then Grayson, little... my son, was just yeah. like, oh, I want to keep up with her. He just, we just fucking threw him in. He, you're not as... You're not as uh, over the, you're not as overprotective of your second as you are your first. Anyway, you're the second, right? No, I'm the third. Oh, you're the third. Yeah, I okay. got an older sister and an older brother. Oh shit. Yeah, I get everything I want because I'm the baby. Yeah, 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 yeah. I get everything. So I got this TV here. Yeah. You got to see. Wait, hold on before you play it. Is this reaction video, I, bro? I. You've seen it then. So there's more to it. It's just this. This pissed me off, dude. I'll take us a doctor. Like. Okay. This, I got the Stop Normalizing and Beast. We talked about how we were not big fans of Lizzo. By the way, yeah. Lizzo, go sit on it. I hate <laughs> Lizzo, what she represents, what she does. And now I could say that because she actually did something bad by telling her. Yeah, she kind of got canceled. To, yeah, it's because she was tell, she was fat shaming her own people. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, what are you, what are you fat shaming for? Yeah. You're 8,000 pounds. She's eight tons. <laughs> like, what is that? Look at it. This is, this is a, a certified real doctor. I don't remember what what, uh, what hospital she works at, but this is not bullshit. Like they, well, she's young. I, I, hopefully she's fired. So she's probably woke. This is why the world is f- uh, fucked right now. Okay, let's hear it. I totally agree. It is okay to be fat. We don't say that enough, but it needs to be normalized. If you are fat, that is okay. It is typically not a problem that requires immediate solving. It is not an emergency. You don't have to drop everything in the pursuit of being not fat. Erin said this other thing in a different video that I totally agree with as well, is that it is okay to not be healthy. We act like it is this moral failing, this cardinal sin that you deserve a scarlet letter if you are not healthy. 
And there's a name for that, and that's called healthism. Now, don't get me wrong. In my line of work, there's a lot of people that I see that want to gain weight, lose weight, take other measures that they think will improve their health in some way. And by all means, that's what we're here for. We're here to help you with that and be supportive of that. But a good doctor will not judge you for being fat. They will not judge you for being unhealthy. They will not judge the decisions that you made or the decision. Dude, I'm telling you something right now. I doubt she's a real doctor. She's probably one of these ones. If that I was for. a doctor yeah. and a hefty, if a, a, a big dude rolled in to this room and he sat on my thing, I would sit there and go, buddy, <laughs> it's time. <laughs> you, 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 It seems to me when you take a bath, your feet aren't getting wet. So it might be time to Figure, that's what is healthism? Yeah, I never heard of that. Healthism. I don't believe she's a real doctor, but that's, you think that's, that's bullshit? That's not based on no. I mean, she probably works for one of those like med spas or something. You know what I mean? And calls herself a doctor. She probably like uh, Joe Biden's wife. She she calls herself a doctor, right? <laughs> doesn't she? Really? Yeah, I don't Dr. Know. Jill Biden. I just don't. She, she doesn't have a doctor in anything. I don't think. But uh, yeah, I, I think that is insanity. Um, I do think that there are you can be. Not, not fat, you can be heavier and be healthy. You can't be fat and healthy. There's a difference. You can't be morbidly obese and yeah. healthy. You can be, I mean, there are people that exercise that are have probably some excess weight to them, but they exercise, yeah. they eat as well as they could. They probably don't have the best genetic pool ever, but they do their best to be healthy. Not everybody is born blessed with genetics, but if you're morbidly obese, that's a fucking lie. You're, you're, you're not doing your tough, like, why, health like, any service. Like, you're, 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 that you're like by normalizing it, you're technically saying you want to normalize slowly killing yourself. Yeah, it's the same thing. You're not going to make it past 45 yeah. years old. And the worst, the, the funniest part about it is if you went up to a fat person and you said, "Hey, if you could snap your fingers like this and turn into a jack fit dude, would you do it right now?" Mm -hmm. Or like fit girl, whatever it is. There's, they're gonna say yeah to that. I, I, there might be one guy that would say no. You got to look him up. <laughs> he's got a, um, There's that one guy, Patty Pimblett. He's uh, he's a fighter. He's uh, I think he's English. Yeah, he's English. Um, but he's he does an interview now. He gets ripped, right? He cuts cuts weights. Oh oh oh, Pat. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got the but he gets, haircut. Dude, yeah. the second he's he like stops fighting, he's eating a pizza at his post fight press conference yeah, and shit beast. and he's and they asked him they're like dude do you do would you rather be? he's like fuck no these abs look good but he's like i want to be fat and happy <laughs> and bro like a month after he's done with his fight he blows up like a dick he's like i love it i love it you know <laughs> yeah but see when you can transform go back yeah. and forth like that breathe in breathe out there's an interview of him i don't know if you can pull it up or not but talking about would he rather be uh it's a post-fight interview and he's like the person was like, do you, do you prefer to be you know, ripped and lean or fat? And he's like, dude, fat. Are you kidding me? I want really? to be fat. He's not really fat, but he, dude, his face balloons up, you know? So I just, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, right here. I'd rather be fat and happy. Watch. And this is probably a stupid question because I can see the pizza in front of you, but yeah. do you ever miss the six pack when you uh, blow up between fights? I'd rather be fat and happy than ripped. And like these people who are ripped all year round aren't happy. I'm not half. I don't care what they say. <laughs> this six pack sound, I look great, but I'd rather be fat and happy. Like. <laughs> <laughs> looks like a 2009 Justin Bieber. He does. He Holy does. shit. He does. Wow, that's fucking crazy. Well, listen, I, my brother get me into shape. I think he, and it's funny, when I go to his gym, like a lot of his gym people like don't really fully support some of the stuff that I put out and say and oh, yeah. wear. So when I wear this, like, that's not nice. You shouldn't be fat shaming. I was like, listen, maybe we need to do it a little bit more so that we live in a healthy lifestyle. Yeah. Everybody be living a longer life. I mean, I sound like an asshole, but it's just like, that just do you get any people i mean it's you know it's kind of like punching people right in the face with it which i'm sure overweight people don't I like have that gotten, approach but i think i heard you say i have gotten you get people so that many you people actually inspire to start going to the gym yeah i can't even tell you the man I, people send me i had this one dude he was a big dude he was walking on the treadmill in this exact shirt drenched in sweat sent me the video i was like and then, because it bothers me, because people want to bitch about the people that it affects. But what about the people that it's like helping them actually go to the gym? Yeah. Do I do I look bad then? I mean, so I know your brother's like big into fitness and stuff, and, and huge. It, where, is that where your yeah. sort of loathing of obese so, people came in? Yeah. Well, you know what it is. I just somebody, like did somebody fat sit on you? Long no, time you know what happened, bro. It, it was like, and and it's always the in the girls group, like when you go out to a bar and there's a group of girls, it's always the fat one that's the biggest bitch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I know it's insecurities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm just like, and I remember this one incident that happened, I was trying to talk to the girl's friend and like, 
the friend was I I could I, I mean I would think that is kind of true. That is kind of true. She was yeah. like she's the friend protector. Yeah, but yeah. but I was talking to this the girl. She was protector. laughing. She was like having a good time. She's like, oh my god, like I already got her number. This was wild. This was like, I think this was like a year and a half ago, two years ago. Got her number, everything. I was like, all right, if I got her number, like clearly she's into me. And then this just you you could just hear her, like you could hear her walk back, like in, coming over. And I'm like, the fuck is this? And she's like, my friend doesn't want you move move away. So I'm assuming like. She kind of maybe knew of me and like what I was like, like what, what my videos and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, y what? She's like, oh, I, my friend is like not really like a fan of you and like all this stuff. Oh, I'm like, I don't shit. give a shit. And I'm not a fan that she shoves Twinkies up her ass. <laughs> but then that's just, it, but that's true though. They're yeah. always the biggest, they're always the yeah. biggest bitch in the group. Yeah, I never thought about that. But there's, I, I've had some experiences where, where, there, where there's one that's like, Allocator. She's like the 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 DD, but she doesn't drive. She just takes care of the friend at the bar. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And they're always assholes. It's yep. like, yo, let your yep. friend like yeah. chill with me, man. That's funny. That sucks. But so that experience weighed heavy on you, huh? Just that, and just I I I'm I'm really proud. Of, I'm I'm honestly proud of what this has done, though. It's mm. done more good than bad. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. Like the amount of people that I get, like yo, like. I started working out because you just don't like fat people. Like, I want you to like me. I'm like, good, whatever it takes, brother. Yeah. I like to see people, you know, work You know, out. You, you, one of your shirts got me thinking a little bit, I th and I think Frankie and I talked about it a while ago. I mean, there are no more insane asylums, basically, right? I mean, they essentially... I don't think... Because they there, have such there a might stigma be a to them, right? They, they And they all oh, atrocities happen in them as well. What was the, what's the big one? Uh, ben, ben... Not Ben Salem. There's or, one, there's one, and I, I never knew it was there, um... I was driving my chick to the uh, airport in, um, what airport was it? What airport is that? What, what's the um, the one in, uh, asylum in, uh, not Newport. Where is it? There's Newark, in, there's Atlantic City. It's a small, small airport. Because with B, I can't think of uh, the. Trenton. Oh, Trenton. I drove her to Trenton, yeah. and we're, I'm, it looked like a haunted house. Yeah. It had all, I was like, what is it? She's like, oh, that's an insane asylum. Yeah. I was like, holy shit. Yeah, we could go on for days about that. You know what I mean? And I think and gun violence and all this other stuff that is attributed to um, mental, you know. I think illness, the people that are identifying as X, Y, and Z, and Q, R, Z, and P, and D, because I don't even know. I was just listening to this one thing. The the amount of pronouns that this fucking girl. I was like, how do you even? They gotta like write it down and then like memorize it. Now, do you think that is because they? I'm not saying all of them. I think there are some that truly, but the, if you just look at the trend and this upswing, there's no possible way that everybody just realized it overnight and, and, and switched teams, right? Like it was, there, there are some people that I think truly believe that they were born in the wrong body, right? I think, I think maybe Bruce Jenner is one of those, right? Um, but then I think that there's this, this uh, love of attention too that seems yeah. to be a lot oh, of yeah. people just do it because they want the attention. They want to be make demands and walk yep. into a place and be like, you didn't call me by my proper pronouns when they, and film it. Why are you filming it? You know what I mean? Like, it's all it is for you see the, 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 um, I forget what airline or Delta maybe where the guy, the, the person was filming them and, Wait, and I think I the guy handled it like flawlessly. Really? Yeah. He's like, yeah, you, you, you can pull it up. I think it was a, I think it was a Delta, um, uh, counter clerk. Some of them, like like Bruce Jenner, he, he he's it, good like, with it, like flawlessly. He, I like. I listen. I I or I, Caitlin, I I fuck with say. Caitlin because, like, he thinks it's crazy. He, yeah, no, just just how he, he he's got a sense of humor. Yes. He can make fun of yep. himself or herself. Yep. You know, right there. Delta employee yeah. stands up to pronoun. Yeah, police. watch this. This guy handles this flawlessly, and this person filming it thought they were burning him by posting this, and it actually makes him look like. What about when an adult employee misgenders you intentionally? While she's talk, while he's talking. Trans actress Tommy Dorfman has filmed the moment a Delta employee threatened to kick her out of LaGuardia Airport after she complained when he misgendered her. <laughs> you just misgendered me again. Are you talking? Okay. Multiple times. While she's talk, while he's talking. Both of you have. It wasn't intentional, but if you want to take it personal, that's also... Well, okay. she did do it intentionally twice. Are you talking to me too? You said she, and then you said he. You're being condescending, and if you want to continue, mm. I have Yo, to escort. Nobody was doing anything intentionally disrespectful there. They were addressing that person the yeah. way they saw that person, not to be disrespectful. That person pulls out a camera and tries to like shame right them away. for doing something they weren't doing. 
for, to, for me, there has to be intent. If you're intentionally trying to, like, they weren't intentionally trying to, like, you know, disrespect that person. So I think that guy handled that flawlessly. Yeah. It's all, I think it just went crazy after. The world is crazy, man. It is crazy. And, and you're not a parent yet. And I, and I don't know if anybody would ever procreate with you. So I don't know if you ever have to worry about it. But <laughs> <laughs> um, when you get to be a parent, you'll look at the world differently. It's, it's, I'm not worried about me, bro. I'll handle anything that comes down the pike. I'm yeah. not worried about I'm worried about it for my kids. You know what I mean? Like Would I can you deal with as much kids? crazy. Not yet, but, you know, I'm divorced. So everything has to be. It's, it's not like we're a one. Yeah, yeah. We're united front anymore. We're kind of, you know, for our kids, I like to think that we are, but things have to. There's, there's a lot Dude, of checks what and these balances. Teachers are and teaching, bro. My kids are in a good school. I'm not going to say where they go to school, but they're in a good yeah. school. And um, I've heard none of that yet. But it's a slow, not even slow. It's a, it's, it's getting to be, uh, it's getting to be like streamlined into all curriculum just how it's like, fast it's the forcing dude. they're pushing it's like us, yeah. listen if you want to be if you want to identify as, a, as an animal and a cat and a mouse do it yourself you don't got well, to removal of parents rights you don't got to run around and say hey i'm a man. cat you be right. a cat too no dude right. get get you get the fuck out of here well again i think that that is something that has to take place in the household, not at school oh no that's all the, that's all the parents that, that that's 100 that's the part that 100%. bothers me they're trying to remove Parents rights yep. completely and that's way overstepping. They want to say that beating your kid at a young age and keep teaching them discipline right. is is abuse But what's abuse is mm. you know Giving your kid an unhealthy lifestyle growing mm. up or something like that yeah. so that he went like that's shit like that's abuse if My either of my kids turned out to be gay if it happened organically naturally yeah. I would not love them any less. I'd love yeah. them the same, but I'm certainly not gonna push it on them and I feel like you know there's this on this them. A lot of the curriculum, a lot of the books offered now is almost pushing it on them. You know what I mean? Like they don't. My kids don't even know boys or girls. Why are you talking about either at their crazy. age, five and seven? Uh, excuse me, seven and nine. Shouldn't be talking about either. You know? Yeah, it's crazy. It's a conversation now. for the parents to have when they're older. You know? It's nuts. When I was when I was younger, I didn't even know I had a dick until I was like thirteen years old, <laughs> yeah. dude. And now it's like, yeah, motherfuckers are chopping. You don't use it, you time. lose it. It's crazy. But um, all right. So you got. The what is it? Tramp in the Champ in the Tramp I podcast. Fuck yeah, Tramp, I, I, Champ I in the it. Tramp. Champ in the Tramp. Yep. All right. So, any new like projects you got coming up, or anything exciting you got coming uh, on? Or just no, I'm just living the dad shit. life. Obviously, um, doing the podcast with Frankie too. Uh, just grinding. had the movie. The movie just came out. Bastard Sons. Everybody can check that out on Amazon, iTunes, maybe Netflix. I'm not sure. Don't quote me on Netflix, but uh, yeah, check that out. Again, I have a small role, but support my boy. Uh, uh, Frankie and Kevin. Kevin's a good dude. There might be a sequel coming out, so we'll see what happens there. But I want to uh, yeah. get Frankie on. You think he'd come on or no? I do. I think Frankie would absolutely. Frankie, I want to get, Frankie, but I want to bring Frankie him on and get. I, I know these. I want to get when someone. I first on also. told him about you. He's like, who? Who is this guy? What does this guy do? And I showed him some of your videos. He's like, yeah, man, we can. We, we definitely have this guy. I want to so. get someone on that's like familiar with UFC stuff too, yeah. so that they can ask him quite yeah. like. I'm surprised you're not. I mean, you're such a. Uh, I'm only moto, dude. I was like a man's man. I'm surprised you're not yeah, into UFC. I, know, man. I gotta, yeah. I gotta, I gotta get into it a little bit more because literally all my friends are into it and they all watch that shit and they're always asking me. Shit. I'm like, I don't see it, but yeah, I have yeah. to. But um. Awesome having you on, Roger. Make Appreciate sure you guys it, follow him on Instagram, Roger Matthews, New Jer uh, NJ, uh, Champ in the Tramp podcast on all platforms. Make sure you tune into that. Um, fun talking to you, brother. Thanks for coming on. And uh, make sure you guys are rocking the merch, DukeGomez.com. He's rocking it. I'm rocking it. We got to stop normalizing this so we can live a nice little healthy lifestyle. Love you guys all. Thank you for the support. And uh, sit on it. Bye.